Well, hello, good morning, friends. Welcome back to Alaska. I'm excited we're continuing our well project that we started with you guys last week. Like we said, we rented some equipment to help us dig this trench across the driveway. If you missed the video previous to this one, we shared with you guys that our current well was just not deep enough and we were running out of water during showers and doing dishes. And so thankfully, when we bought the cabin, we did pay to have a new well drilled that is significantly deeper than the original one. The only problem is we never tied the new well into the cabin. So what we're doing is working on connecting the piping from the new well to the old well piping system because that system is already ran all the way down the driveway to the cabin. Today should be interesting. Joe's never driven a tractor, but I have all confidence and faith in him because he watched a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> anyway, let's go see how Joe's doing. This one is approximately 46 feet. And across the driveway, we have the new well, which is approximately 120 feet. So we're digging out this trench here, and we're gonna be doing a pipe across the driveway, good and deep, uh, because it is the driveway, right? So we wanna make sure it's down far enough that we don't have any issues later. Tapping into this plumbing here, that's gonna run all the way down the driveway, back to the cabin. I must say, <laughs> Joe looks kind of cute up in that tractor. Hmm. So many of you have been like, Joe needs a tractor. Yeah, tractors take money though. So eventually, eventually we'll get there. One thing at a time, right? It's like a dinosaur. It's like a transformer. Something's a little intimidating. He just gave me the biggest grin ever from the cockpit. It's like, he's just a little kid at heart. You know what I'm saying? Just playing with a big old Tonka truck. You guys remember the Tonka trucks? Mm-hmm. That's when toys were made right. Me and my brothers had dump trucks, backhoes, all kinds of stuff when we were kids. We used to live in the desert in California. We were always hauling dirt from the chicken coop to the, to the goat pen. Those were the good old days.
So I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. And we have to keep it a secret, okay? Because I'm still, still working on my magic, all right? You guys that are homesteaders, you know what I'm talking about, all right? And I know sometimes it's the husband that's like this and sometimes it's the wife, but in mine and Joe's situation, it's me. You guys know in Virginia, when we got our 18 acre farm, we had all the things. Cows, chickens, pigs, sheep, horses, ducks. Uh, I was milking a dairy cow every day. I mean, we had a big old garden. We were butchering meat birds. I mean, just doing all the things. And while it was wonderful, it was a lot. And we very quickly got overwhelmed. So many people have asked if we are going to get another dairy animal. And we're just so torn. Like I have been so torn because while I want to provide the basic staples for my family, meat, chicken, eggs, dairy, I also don't want to go completely overboard like we did at our first farm to the point where we were so overwhelmed that we had no time for anything, couldn't go anywhere without, you know, paying for a farm sitter to take care of like the zoo that we had created essentially. So it's kind of like trying to find the new balance here at the Alaska Homestead because this is our third homestead that we will have built up from the ground. And I'm excited to see it take shape, you know, the greenhouse, the chicken coop. And so I've been kicking around the idea of another dairy animal. I don't want a cow because while our Jersey milk was the bomb and I loved my Gracie girl, uh, they are bigger, they eat a lot more, and for our small family, we could not keep up with the amount of milk that we were getting. And for me, as the milker, it was quite overwhelming. And I was doing all the things, butter, yogurt, cheeses, milk, and sharing with the neighbors, and it was just still too much milk. We were throwing the excess to the pigs, which was fine, right? It's just like, not wasted, it's at least going back to the pigs, which we then ate. But we just don't need a cow. Our, our family is so small, we don't need a cow. At our second homestead in Virginia, you guys might remember, I bought a sheep, a Katahdin sheep, and her name was Delilah. And it's funny because the Katahdin breed is not typically a dairy breed. However, you can milk a Katahdin, and I showed that in several videos. And it actually was pretty perfect for our family. I would go and get a pint every morning. Um, and it just was the perfect amount of, of milk for our family. So I'm thinking about getting a small flock of sheep and I'm looking into the, potentially like the Icelandic breed, Shetland breed, or maybe a mix of both. They are a wool breed. The Katahdins are a hair sheep, which just means they don't get the wool that has to be sheared every year. Uh, they don't have that. But I think that getting a wool breed will be really good and hardy for the Alaska temperatures. We don't plan on spinning and making our own sweaters, at least not right now, guys. Like I know that's like this primitive idea and it's like, oh, I could make all my own socks and all my own clothes. Tina's not there yet, okay? It's, yeah, no, it's, there's, 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 there's like this understanding that you have to have. Like, and a lot of people, think it's like either all in or nothing. And for me, it's just trying every day to do the best we can and always striving to do better. You know, for instance, I have people that leave comments on our video if we have like spaghetti for dinner one night and they see my craft Parmesan cheese shaker on the kitchen table and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe you use that cheese. That's so unhealthy for you. Like, don't you make your own cheese? I thought you were a homesteader. It's like, Okay, like, can we just be real for a second? Nobody is 100% self-sufficient. Nobody, right? I mean, even if you are off-grid, remote, you still need fuel, you still need um, sugar, you probably still buy coffee, you're not growing coffee beans, right? So it's just the funniest thing to me when people are like, oh my God, you use Tide laundry soap to do your laundry. It's so bad for you. Why aren't you making your own laundry soap? Ain't nobody got time for that. 
Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm homeschooling, I'm running a YouTube channel, we're building up a new homestead. So to think that I could make all my own products from hand and never buy something from the grocery store is not realistic, nor is that mine and Joe's goal at all. So what I would like to have is my garden every year, my chickens for fresh eggs. I would like to raise up a batch of meat birds every year to stock the freezer with fresh chicken. That's always been one of my favorite things. And I do think that I want another dairy animal. And with sheep, they are not in milk as long as a cow. A cow is in milk for the majority of the year. So you have a constant milk supply until you dry her off before she calves again. Sheep are only in milk, depending on the breed, anywhere from two to five to six months. So my desire would be to have two or three good ewes for milk that I can provide milk for the family and make butter and yogurt. And sorry, the dogs are upstairs, that's what that sound is, but sheep milk is fantastic. And I would have to say, if I put it up against cow's milk, taste wise, I actually preferred sheep milk over cow's milk. And sheep milk is a fi higher fat content, so when you're looking at making butter and cheeses, and it's just great for that. So I've been kind of working on Joe, you know what I'm saying? So here's a trick, ladies, or gents. You gotta like break them in slowly, you know what I'm saying? So first I did the chicken coop. We got the coop, and now I'm working on the sheep. And of course Joe's like, oh Lord, here she goes again. But I'm like, Joe, calm down, hear me out. And the, the trick is to annihilate all the obstacles before you do your presentation, right? And I know that one of Joe's biggest obstacles is, and mine, we want the freedom to explore Alaska, go camping with the boys, go to the remote cabin and go fishing for days and all the things, right? So if you have a ton of animals, it's very hard to do that unless you pay someone to come look after them, which I'm fine with that. We have a good friend that actually lives fairly close to us and I have already talked to her. She has geese, chickens, rabbits. I think that's all she has, but she's just a really sweet friend. In fact, we've been getting our fresh chicken eggs from her until our girls start laying. And I've already set it up with her. And anytime we go to the remote cabin or we go and take the boys on a two, three, four day adventure, we're going to kick her down some cash and she's going to come look after the chickens and the sheep for us. And really they're a hardy animal. Sheep are just so hardy and easy to take care of. And so yeah, that big obstacle is already taken care of. What you guys typically see is around the cabin in the clearing where the pond is, but we have a ton of acreage that is wooded, but it is also clear and flat. We went hiking through there the other day and just beyond the boys' tree fort is this perfect paddock that I think would be a great uh, pasture for our sheep. So we've got to work on that. We would definitely be doing electric fencing because I know a lot of you would be like, well, what about bears? How are you going to protect them from, uh, you know, that we would definitely do electric fencing. But anyway, that is the secret. It's not really a secret because I've kind of already like mentioned it to Joe. I'm just kind of like working on him and like massaging it, but I'll keep you guys posted uh, once we get into that venture. All right. So Slight problem. We have no water and we don't know why. So that means that Joe has hit something by accident and he's thinking that he probably hit the electrical line. You know, there's no way to know when you're digging down like that and we didn't put this well in so we are uh, assuming or we did assume that the plumbing would go straight from the wellhead to the cabin in a straight line. So Joe was digging in a specific way, but somehow he said something and um, we have the things to fix it. He knows how to fix it if it is the electrical, but we just can't figure out what it is yet because every time he tries to dig down with the shovel to see if he can find it where he might have hit it, all the, the rock and dirt just keeps falling in on it. So anyway, I'm gonna cook me and Joe a quick breakfast. The boys already ate this morning. Make me and Joe a breakfast bowl. You guys know we're still doing keto, so I'm just doing a simple breakfast bowl for breakfast because my man's gotta eat. Joe has a bad habit of like getting into projects and forgetting to eat. Like he will just get knee deep in dirt working on a project and then come in at five o'clock at night and 
not have eaten all day and then he's absolutely exhausted, right? He needs to eat to replenish his energy. So I'm gonna feed him and then I am going to drive to the closest little market to try to buy some water just in case because as of right now we have no drinking water no water to brush our teeth no water for cooking no water for anything until we figure out what went wrong and get it fixed Picked you up outside of school. You said, Screw my dad, I make my own rules. It was easier than so much easier than take me back to the take me back to those easy summer days when we stopped at nothing, baby. Yeah, we stopped at nothing, baby. They couldn't take us. They couldn't change us, they couldn't catch us if they tried. Now we didn't care at all about winter or spring or fall. We felt so alive and girl, we were thriving on kisses and sunshine and mischief. Yeah, we had one of those things. Uh, we just had one of those things. Yes, I've had some things to figure out, but now that I'm done... All right, we are back from the store. Got some water, just in case. It's never good to be out of water, right? You guys like our, like our temporary roof on the chicken kennel? Someone's like, you guys need to get a roof on there to protect the chickens from the rain and the sun. I'm like, if it starts raining, we put them back in the coop. We just put them in there during the day temporarily until we build them a chicken yard. And then the sun, they love the sun. They love being outside. They hate being cooped up in the coop. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> cooped up in the coop. <laughs> oh, wow, Joe. That is massive. <laughs> it sucked right here. I couldn't even hardly get through it. Yeah? Right there. Because it was too hard or what? It's like clay. Oh, it is like clay. Yeah. Wow. Jump for it out. Oh. oh gosh. So we actually cut the electrical and the water line <laughs> with the tractor. So, uh, but it's not Joe's fault. I mean, he had no way of seeing. And the way that this is, <clears throat> whenever he would dig out a big bucket full, the sides just kind of cave in on it. So he didn't even see it. Thankfully, we have all the things already to fix the electrical and the water line. So he's working on leveling out the bottom of this trench right now and then he's got to put the pitless in, run the line and then we're also taking the, the well pump from the old well and putting it on the new one and then we'll go from there. <laughs> That's what you get from me. That's me narrating this project because Joe's down in the hole and even if Joe told you right now you wouldn't be able to hear him. So that's, that's as good as it gets. Pitless, piping, pump. We are insulating the piping. A lot of people asked about that. We are insulating. 
Yeah, see how I do. It's, it's fine. What is that, Gunner? Is that a tractor? So when we were in Virginia living at the apartment, temporarily before we moved to Alaska, that's when we got the pups, Bradley and Gunner. And we lived in the city, you guys know that. So the apartment complex was by a grocery store. And every Friday, this big trash truck would come and empty the big garbage cans in back of the grocery store. One day, we were walking Bradley and Gunner in the parking lot and the dump truck or the trash truck put the trash bin down and the sound of that metal dumpster and the truck scared the bejesus out of Bradley and he broke free from me busted his collar right off, like it had a clip, a clip collar, busted it right off and tore off through the apartment complex just so fast. And we had to go find him, just terrified him. Literally ever since then, he is scared of any type of big equipment, tractors, semi trucks, the FedEx truck, it doesn't matter what it is. Even like the rolling carts and loads that you might carry your lumber on, the sound of those metal carts terrifies him. So we, we have been working with him. We take him to Lowe's and Home Depot just for that reason to get him around the forklifts and the noises to try to help him. But today, Joe completely forgot about Bradley's fear of big equipment and let the dogs out once we got the tractor. And as soon as Bradley heard it, he tore off through the forest and we had to search for him for like 30 minutes. I mean, he was gone, gone. He was like, nope, I know what's gonna eat me. It's got big teeth. We eventually found him, but we're having to keep Bradley in the house because he is not having anything to do with this tractor. All right, so it's time for the boys lunch and I made some homemade pizza for them. I rolled the pizza out out of fresh ground flour, made the cheese and grated it, defrosted some hamburger meat and some pepperonis that we had in the freezer and I'm making them a delicious homemade pizza for lunch. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Um, there's a really cute deli at the market and they make these pizzas right there And so I bought them one of these little these little pizzas. You know what I'm saying? See, 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 see. I told you I told you it's not about 100% because sometimes you just got to make a frozen pizza But it's okay. They're gonna eat lunch and they're gonna love it And I'm gonna be the best cook in the world and they don't really care All right, why don't we take a little walk over to the pasture that I'm thinking about making our sheep pasture to show you guys what it looks like. We're gonna have to cut down some trees to clear it out because we're gonna need um, sun exposure because I plan on having a, an electric fence which is gonna be powered by solar. So we're gonna have to clear some of the trees, but for the most part, it's a very flat pasture. I would like to do at least an acre and a half to two acres fenced in and maybe split that in half so that we can rotate the sheep back and forth so that they, the pasture gets a chance to grow its vegetation back and also that helps to cut down on parasites in the sheep if you are rotating their pasture. But this is the trail you guys might recognize that comes off of the cabin and the boys tree fort that we built them is right over there. So we have all this land right here that I think would be a perfect pasture for our sheep. And it's close enough to the cabin that we can keep a close eye on them, we'll hear them if anything goes wrong in the middle of the night. And we already have a trail here, which will be perfect. We can just drive the Polaris up here with bales of hay to feed them. It'll be super convenient. But down in this valley here, you can't really tell in the video, but this is all flat back there. So I think this is a great spot for it. And then the boys can watch the little lambs frolicking around while they play in their tree fort.
for this one. So they had it right here. That's the current water line? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's right in the driveway pretty much. So right. Yeah. I haven't had any issues. Oh yeah, just went right into it, huh? So we found the broken water line that we busted with the tractor and we found the conduit that the electrical wires were running through that's also broken. But the good news is the rest of the, the pipe that we can see is still intact so Joe can take off the part that's jacked up and fix it, put them back together again. It's crazy to see that all of our water that we use comes through this one pipe. I mean, I don't know why that's so crazy to me. It's just, you know, I don't know. Like you live in the city and you just, your water just comes out of a faucet and you don't really think about where it comes from. And here, ours comes from underground and it's amazing to see this whole system like this and that all of our water comes from this one pipe from the well. It's amazing. You guys want one piece or two? Two. Can we have four? No, you may not have four. Silly goose. I want two. Okay. I want two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Move, Joe.
suck if an earthquake happened while I was down here. <laughs> so it turns out I'm scared of heights and holes. It's kind of eerie being down in here. The mosquitoes are out. Thankfully, this is like really clay-like, so it's holding really, it's holding really good. I just don't like it. You know, you hear like those kids at the beach that die because they dig a little sand hole, sand castle type thing and it ends up collapsing on them. Yeah. So it's gonna come out the side of the pipe. And this is gonna go down the well. What is that? A pitless adapter. Can you? It's half of the pitless adapter. What does a pitless do? Wanna go to the trailer so I can get the box? I mean, pitless, I don't, like, even when I hear that term, what does that mean? Like, you don't have an armpit? If you're pitless, what is that? <laughs> a big old pit, and the wellhead was in the bottom of the pit to keep it from freezing. <clears throat> okay. But now, they have pitless adapters, so you don't have to have a pit. It's a pitless well. So you can run the line underground instead of having your well at the bottom. And it does this, it lets you put your line through the pipe underground. Oh. So it doesn't come out because it'll freeze if it comes out the top. And under the frost line, it won't freeze. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Super clay. Yeah. Wow, Joe, look at that. It's crazy how you can see all three layers. Like you got the sand, the clay, the rocks. Um, I gotta cut the old pipe. Put this on it. So I can add new lines. The old pipe that you broke? Mm hmm. Parker caught a frog. Looks like a bullfrog. Ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, look. Big. Look at him. Oh. oh. <laughs> Can you see him? Yeah. Don't run. <laughs> There's so many of them in the pond, I could hear them all uh -huh. croaking. They got big ones in there too. Yeah, good job. There's more. Have you found any eggs yet? I saw an egg, not like frog eggs, but I saw an open egg when I was adventuring around the pond. Yeah, you can watch them turn into little tadpoles. Oh, don't drop them. Oh, so slimy <laughs> and soft too. Oh, <clears throat> it's okay. Yeah. They won't hurt you, Kellen. Did it scare you? Yeah. Yeah, they won't hurt you. He's getting dry. All right, go put him back in the pond, okay? So he can be with his family.
Kelsey. Nice. Well, you got it in there. Yeah. All right, so we've got the water line in and buried. Now we're gonna do the electrical in the conduits. Joe's gonna put that junction box in, and once that electrical is done, we have uh, styrofoam insulation boards we're gonna be putting down on top of it, and then it should be time to bury it in. But before we bury that hole back in, we are gonna check and make sure that the water works first, just in case there's any issues. It's all still exposed where we can get to it. Like, he won't come off at all. Is it like the baby on top of the mama? I don't know. Or are they mating? Like, what is that? I don't know. I thought they were mating, but that one looks He's like He's literally him. holding on with his arms. That is so cute. Oh, look at you. Got a frog, too. I catch this. <gasps> oh, there. I see it. Get him, get him, get him. Get it. Oh, baby. Go on. Oh, baby. Release her. Actually, it's like we keep finding them. It's because of the baby. The baby is all on top of her and it's showing up. Yeah. She oh, 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 oh. Oh, I got it, mama. I got one. I got one, mama. This is mm -hmm. the baby and the mama again. Got what? Got one. Out. Whoa. Oh, it's a fast one. Oh, wow. Do you need help? Joe, be careful. Joe, do you need help? Well, hey guys, so a couple hours has passed. As you can tell, the sun is going down. It's still light out, but uh, we ran into a little snag. We got the water line in and we we're getting ready to do the electrical and the well pump and realized we were missing a part that we need to finish that um, system, whatever you wanna call it. So Joe had to run all the way to town 
before Lowe's closed to get this part that we needed or else we could not have finished setting up the well pump. And as you guys know, we have no water. You know, we need water. So it is quite the haul to the nearest town. You guys know that. Joe did go and he just got back. So he's down in the hole working on it again. And hopefully we can get this done tonight and get this water going. Joe. You literally have mosquitoes all over your back. Be careful, babe, because that's collapsing. Did you hear me? Uh -huh. Look, this whole thing collapsed off. <gasps> now I can't even cover it with the board on this side. Oh, no. Just while you were gone, that collapsed? No, like right now when I was in there. While you were in there? Mm -hmm. I don't like off. I realize it's full of chemicals goes right into your bloodstream and it's bad for you. I was just talking on my Instagram live about how I'm trying to find some other natural, natural things. Some people are saying like neem oil and I just haven't had a chance to research it yet. He is currently getting eaten alive by Alaska mosquitoes, which are the size of bald eagles. So I'm gonna get my husband some off and help him out. If you know of any good mosquito repellent, let me know in the comments, would ya? I shouldn't show him this. I already had a talk with them, Joe, about the off <laughs> or repel, whatever it is. And we already had a talk about not being 100% this morning, right? We talked about that. Like nobody's 100%. So, and the bottom line is it's our life and it's our body, right? So like, what's your guilty pleasure? Like, is your guilty pleasure sitting in a bubble bath with all kinds of like bath bombs that have chemicals that go up your hoo-ha that are gonna cause cancer. Well, by golly, if that's your guilty pleasure, then you go sit in that bath bomb. You know what I'm saying? Like, you won't see Tina judging you because you do you, boo. That's your life and I'm gonna do mine. So we're just trying not to get eaten alive by mosquitoes out here. So Joe is currently putting in the junction box for the electrical and that's what powers the water pump. Once he's done putting this uh, junction box in, we are gonna run that wiring through the conduit pipe and run that to the new well. And then we can put the pump in the new well and hopefully generate this thing and see if we have water. <laughs> Haven't you seen ninjas with broomsticks? <laughs> Coming to a theater near you. So apparently this was the part that Joe had to go get from Lowe's. This brass fitting here. We didn't have that. All right, guys, this is it. Moment of truth. We are gonna see if the water works in the cabin. Joe, I really hope the water works in the cabin. 
All right, guys, update on the well. So I am talking kind of quiet because the boys are already in bed. So we realized before we even turned a faucet on that there was no power coming from the house to the well. And we don't really know why yet. Joe thinks also potentially it could be an issue right underneath the cabin itself. And I'm like, well, how is that when everything was fine before you busted the the uh, pipes? And he said when he went on there to check it out just now, the wires that are in the um, connectors were kind of pulled loose. And so when he pushed that bucket down and it was pushing pressure, pressure, pressure before the wires finally snapped today, it could have pulled all those wires loose under the cabin. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that's like Tina's version of what is the possible problem. Joe could probably explain it a lot better, but that was like my perception of how he explained it to me. He is currently under the crawl space right now, trying to troubleshoot it and figure it out. Hey guys, good morning. Did you see that? We have water. We were up until two o'clock in the morning last night trying to troubleshoot why we had no electric to the water or to the well pump. And it turns out Joe's thought was correct. Underneath the house where the junction box is with the wires, it was the weakest link for the wires when he hit the line yesterday. So the pressure pulling the wires before they finally snapped in the trench caused those wires to be pulled loose from the, the little end cap nut thingies. So anyway, Joe fixed that, replaced those, and then sure enough, as soon as we did that, everything works great. Anyway, on to something more important. Today's my birthday. I am, <clears throat> um, excuse me, I have a little tickle in my throat. <laughs> 41 years old today. Um, so it's, it's a great day. I'm officially heading towards 50. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? It's just like so fun. How come when you get older, birthdays aren't exciting anymore? It's like, I'm good. Like I really, my mom texted me at 11.55 last night and was like, I just wanted to be the one to tell you happy birthday first. And I'm like, oh, I forgot it was my birthday. Like I knew my birthday was coming, but that was like two weeks ago. And then I forgot that my birthday's today. So my birthday's today. Joe, apparently at some point without me knowing, went and bought all the stuff to make me a chocolate cake. And yes, I will be splurging on a really, really fat piece of cake and a glass of red wine tonight for my birthday. It's an animal that's really big, similar to a buffalo. Uh, the last one is a vase. Is a buffalo a bull? A bull means a boy. Like a male. That's all that means. I'm a bull. Uh, this is a van. Got that right. Lemon. Yak. Just put a Y next to it. You don't need a Pad. Pan. Pan. Good. Sock. Lock. Sap. Sap. Like the sap in a tree, right? So he's supposed to draw an angle that's congruent with LIN. So congruent means the same. So this is LIN. So he needs to draw an angle that is the same measurement as that. But I forgot how to use the protractor. So I was wondering if you could like help me remember. Parker, don't know how to use it? No, Parker forgot too, Joe. That's why we're calling you in here. Parker, pay attention to your father. Mm -hmm. 
lay the book down. The direct object is book, okay? The chicken laid an egg. The egg is the direct object. So, lay will always have a direct object, will always have a thing. Lay the Bible on the table. Lay the bird on the ground. Direct object is the bird. Direct object was the Bible. Got it? The hardest thing I think I've ever done in my life is fifth grade math. <laughs> And it's like, just when you get down one concept, they wanna give you another one. And see, math is very interesting because the concepts layer on top of each other. So if you didn't get the concept three layers down here, you're not gonna get the concepts that are up here that keep going for all of eternity. My jam is like language arts. Language arts and history, give me an essay, give me, grammar, pronouns, I know all about pronouns, I know proper pronouns, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> proper pronouns. Why are you turning your face away? <laughs> why, are you, why are you turning your face? <laughs> you got the poo poo face going? I know. I gotta go poo poo face? <laughs> That's not the poo poo face. What's the poo poo face? Oh, gosh. All right, all right, all right. The water piece set it there. Why do you smell like that when you work? Why are you ignoring me? Joe, your armpits, like. Can I just, we just lift it up one time? Let me just smell it, Joe. Just one sniff, that's all I need. Now we're gonna do the, the, the wow. Joe's gonna put the junction box shit. 
just stop. Hey guys, good morning. That's okay. It's only my fifth time trying to do an intro this morning. Huh? <laughs> okay, I want you guys to like sing really good for me, okay? Like, let me hear it now. Blah, 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 blah. I want a two, I want two, three, four, hit. Yeah. 